Hello and welcome everyone to World Vegan Vision Mumbai and its first online conference in 2021. My name is Ruchika Chitrabhanu and I warmly welcome you all today for the series of Awakening Souls. World Vegan Vision is a global non-profit organization based in New York, USA. founded by Harshad Shah and his wife Malti Shah Hi our greetings to all attending divine souls my name is Harshad Parekh and here i want to express our heartfelt gratitude and thanks to Sri H.K. Shah and Malti Ben Shah who started initially Vegetarian Vision Inc. in New York and it has been now converted into World Vegan Vision and its Mumbai chapter. They are our mentor and personal friends for more than 25 years. My wife Naina and I are 76 years of age and are trying to live vegan and ahistic lifestyle for more than 31 years. Today we will try to understand how spirituality leads to veganism and ahisa and achieve happiness enlightenment, bliss, and nirvana. At this time, we want to share our lifelong experience, why we became vegan, and how we became vegan. We will also explore why for some of us, it is very easy to start our vegan journey, and for others, it is very difficult to become vegan and change their lifestyle for their own personal benefit. Our understanding is that people become vegan or follow Ahimsa, which is harmless, egoless, honest, and truthful way of life for various diverse reasons. There is no single virtue for which people become vegan or follow Ahimsa lifestyle. Like some people become vegan because it's a calling from their soul. And that happens due to their past and present karma. And some people become vegan because even they have all the abundance in life for having all the material wealth. And still they feel that they are not happy in life. But most of the people become vegan for various other reasons such as love for animals and stop their abuse and killing, protecting environment and in turn the universe, improvement of personal health and well-being and mental peace, etc. And some people become vegan because they feel they are mentally, physically, spiritually and financially in miserable and in desperate situation. So they are looking for a way out of this awful situation in their life and to get better condition. And if they are lucky and their past and present karma are getting aligned with their soul, they get help from good friends, philosopher, guide and guru, and also guidance from spiritual books. And then by trying to follow those principles of veganism, they become vegan. We became vegan because of the mainly financial desperation and also our health concerns. At that time, we were living in USA and having vegetarian and then changed to vegan, ready to eat Indian food business. We have lived in USA for about 30 years. In December of 1989, 
we came to India to attend a family wedding. And at that time, we were very much in financial distress. And I also had a serious and life-threatening kidney disease known as membranous glomerulonephritis syndrome. And my wife, Naina, was at the time diabetic for almost 13 years. Hence, because of the financial and health crisis, we were really desperate and looking for way out. As everything happened for the reason, friend of our family, a truly noble and gentle Muslim philosopher, Sri Akbar Ali Jetha, invited about 30 of us family members for a delicious vegan dinner. And he spoke to us about veganism and Anisa for about 15, 20 minutes. And out of which few lines attracted us the most which were, if you become 1% harmless, you get 1% benefit. And if you become 100% harmless, you get 100% benefit. So I asked him, benefit in what aspect? And he said, you can get benefited mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. That financial word attracted me the most because we wanted to desperately get out of the financial distress. So I asked again, who helps doing all these things? And he said, whoever you believe in, your creator is such as Krishna, Allah, Jesus, or the God you worship. He very confidently said again, if you become harmless, egoless, honest and truthful, you will get whatever you wish and deserve. So I ask, what do we have to do to become harmless, egoless, honest and truthful? He said, just stop using milk in your daily diet. And I said, just by not drinking milk, we will get all these things we want. And he said, yes, try it out. So I requested that we want to know more about this philosophy. Hence he invited us next day for another weekend dinner. So next day we went for other, another sumptuous dinner and he explained to us principle of, and benefit of veganism and ahimsa, which is a harmless, egoless, honest and truthful way of life. And since then, we have started adopting vegan lifestyle. At that time, we did not stop all the dairy products which we were consuming, such as butter, ghee, yogurt, cheese, paneer, etc. But just stop consuming milk. And that's how we started our vegan journey in 1989. At this stage, we want to alert all the listeners that we were lucky that my wife and I started our vegan journey together. But please don't expect and even try to convince your pressure, your spouse to follow what you think is the right for you. So that you should automatically follow. As that will create a lot of friction and resistance from your spouse. Be like a son and shine without any expectation. Anyone wants to change, they will do it on their own choosing, according to their own karma and destiny. Sri Akbar Bhai and we remained friends for about 20 years. Every year, about three to four times a year, when I was visiting India for my food business, we used to meet and talk for hours and hours, and he would reply to my several questions and resolve my desires and doubts in a very thoughtful and convincing manner. He followed vegan lifestyle for more than 40 years. And he was also president of one of the oldest vegan organizations, Beauty Without Cruelty in India. Then he took off from his very successful business and lived in life of recluse for about 14 years to find and to achieve happiness. 
He also studied all the major religions and scriptures like Sri Bhagavad Gita, Quran, Bible, and other religious practices such as Jainism, Buddhism, etc. And ultimately, he came to a conclusion that true message and the foundation of all the religion is love and ahimsa. He also published one of the best-selling books of his time, Reflections, which consists of more than 700 sutras and truths. And before he departed to be with his creator, also wrote a small booklet named On Happiness. We are blessed to have him as our friend who made us what we are today, as he guided us on this path by suggesting us to read great literature from divine masters. And it started with a audio cassette series by Osho, Ashtavakras Mahagita. Everybody should try to listen to audio cassette or video cassette this series. Then he suggested we should read Conversations with God, part one, two, and three, and Friendship with God by Mr. Neil Donald Walsh. And Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. And video series by Mr. Wayne Dyer and many more spiritual masters. He also wrote Most Valuable Practice Truth, 14 Steps to Nirvana or Happiness. We will try to read and understand this phenomenal steps which provides pathway to achieve enlightenment and eternal bliss now and here. At our mutual future convenience, we can study and understand Sri Akbar by journey to enlightenment and bliss. Now going back to our subject, how to live dairy products from our diet. Again, if your past and present karmas are good and helping you, you start thinking that if you are not drinking milk, how can you have other daily products like yogurt, buttermilk, honey, ice cream, etc. So slowly you stop them as well. And slowly you grow from there and due to becoming more conscious and awakened with help from within, that is your soul. And then you are inclined to stop using leather, wool, silk, ivory, etc. Within six months of following vegan diet, my kidney disease was under control. And ultimately, we have achieved so many things in our life, which is unbelievable to describe. I am a survivor of multiple cancer, surgeries, stroke, Crohn's disease, etc. My wife is a survivor of 45 years of diabetes, heart bypass surgery, and she's 76 and alive today, where her mother and sister died at the age of 45 by same disease. And now our financial status is very much stable and healthy. So we are totally convinced that we are truly alive today because of the becoming vegan, which is again harmless, egoless, honest, and truthful way of living life by mind, body, and spirit. That is by thought, word, and deed. So basic truth is that if you don't harm anyone, no one can harm you. And there seems to be a natural and universal force or a law which protects you. And this gives you a sense of security and willpower to go through any adverse situation or force in your life. And this is not the theory, but we are living example of the proof. Now we also have endo understood that most of us get logically convinced that we can change our lifestyle and we should all do it. 
adopt this lifestyle. But it seems it is very difficult to change anybody's food habits. So in spite of knowing all the benefits, most of the people can't or will not change their lifestyle. As our food habits are engraved in our life since our childhood. And most dairy products are deadly and worst addiction of all the addictions. I highly recommend all of us to visit my friend Robert Cohen's website, notmilk.com. It's notmilk.com and see from letter A to Z, how many disease dairy consumption can create in our body. And we are not aware of consequences of our consuming dairy products, which involves serious abuse cruelty, torture, and killing of billions of animals. In fact, consuming dairy is creating more killing and harm than eating meat products. The great beetle Paul McCartney has said, if the slaughterhouse had glass walls, everyone would be vegetarian. And our unconscious state of mind is unable to comprehend and understand connection between what harm we inflict and having impact on our personal life, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. We don't realize that harm we indulge in today is going to affect us in our life, maybe starting from tomorrow, for up to next 20 to 30 years. And the proportion of price we pay is about 10 to 20 times higher harm for which we have indulged today. And many people who are logically convinced about not using dairy products are saying, okay, we want to do it, but it's not possible and ask, what are the benefits of making such huge change in our addictive lifestyle? So most people don't even know what is the purpose of our life, which is to be always and in all the ways being happy, healthy, peaceful, and meaningful life, meaningful life, full of love, joy, happiness, peace, and truth. They are the virtues our creator wished and bestowed upon us. But we choose always and in all ways to be in fear, worry, pain, suffering, and guilt. So at this stage, let's agree that we are all children of God and our creator. So what our creator or God must have wished or blessed us must have been that we all will live life full of love, joy, peace, happiness, and truth. And But most of us are living in full of fear, worry, pain, suffering, and guilt. So question is to be asked, is why such negative things happen in our lives? What we have personally realized are a few simple truths, and they are not rocket science. Anyone can do it right now, today, on this moment onward. But you need some help because purpose of mind is to doubt and desire. Anything you do or listen or experience, there is always a doubt by our mind. Why is it so? And what do I get it from? So another thing we realize that unless you know what you want, you want, you may not get it. So if you want something very desperately and badly, you may follow on the principles of ahimsa and veganism and vegetarianism. And then you need to sacrifice few small things in your life to achieve that ultimate bliss in your life which is another way of getting enlightened and reach nirvana. 
and then there is a difference between happiness and pleasure. We always misunderstand happiness for pleasure. Pleasure is momentary and it comes from outside source and never enough and keeps us always wanting. Whereas happiness is coming from within, that is from our soul and is always eternal and satisfying. So we are all confused by our own daily pleasure of few seconds or few minutes or few hours as happiness, but then it fizzles out. Also, we have observed that spirituality is understood and practiced and realized by mostly two types of people. One is a people who has abundance of everything in life and this material world. So they are having everything they can imagine and still they feel that they are not happy. And then they search for the truth and real happiness and they go into deeper understanding of life and they understand and achieve enlightenment, bliss and nirvana or happiness. Sri Akbar Ali Jetha was from that category. He had everything you can imagine in material wildlife. He was living on Mount Unique at Pedder Road, 18th floor facing sea. And he was thinking, he would spend money without counting. And he was thinking, I have everything in this life and why I'm so unhappy, why I'm not happy. And that started his journey. Like some of our true saints, Mahatmas and godly souls are from very affluent class like kings, Lord Mahavira, Lord Buddha, Lord Krishna, and Lord Rama, Mirabai, were all from affluent classes. They became spiritual leader or godly person after realizing that everything, whatever they want, This is what Osho had told in one of his lectures, that spirituality comes into affluent society mostly because poor people or people with less means, they don't have a food for two time or roof over their head. How they are going to talk about spirituality and understand about peace of mind and happiness. They are worried about their food and existence. So they believe into superstition created by our religion. So we go to temple and ask for everything what we want. But that's not the spirituality. Spirituality is to understand that we are not the only thing in this life or this universe. We are all interconnected with each other. But unfortunately that comes to the affluent and kingly people. But that doesn't mean that only rich people have become saints or mahatmas or godly people, god person. Like Jesus, Muhammad, Kabir, Tulsida, Saint Francis of Assisi, Teresa of Avila, Ansari of Herat, Sri Ramakrishna, Sri Raman Maharshi, and Jalaluddin Rumi, etc. They all come from very normal means and they become spiritually elevated person and that is because of their past and present karma that is where karma plays a huge importance in our life so there is a lot of things we have to understand but main thing i want to share with all of you is that it is not that difficult or impossible to achieve nirvana or happiness or whatever you want within reasonable limits. Whatever you think about getting in of your life, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially, it is doable and it is achievable. As God has made our body, mind, and spirit in such a way that it has given the same creative powers to us, which God has it. But we cannot understand it and use it because of our daily karma. So if we realize that whatever we are doing, small or large, 
which is not aligned with our soul's wishes and desires, then we are not living true meaningful life. Sri Akbar Ali Jetha wrote in his book on happiness, following quote, the function of the mind is reflect the soul. That is a real self or a higher self. In other words, the mind acts like a mirror. By indulging in harm, the mind becomes, so to say, fogged. That is, it loses the clarity. And the more harm we do, the more fog the mirror gets. To the extent where it does not reflect the soul at all. When we are unable to perceive our soul, which is the source of our knowledge and wisdom, we plunge into the darkness and go into dreamlike state, which is non-alert state. At this stage, the ego, false self, is created which communicates in the form of thoughts. But due to our ignorance, we think that the ego is a real self. So this is the reason our mind makes wrong decisions for us, bringing miseries to our lives. At present time, I have been listening to Sister B.K. Shivani, and she is currently the best philosopher or spiritual leader I find who has such a powerful message for all of us. The small things she suggests are so powerful and so useful, and you can be on path of nirvana. Now I also want to read Sri Akbar Ali Jetha's 14 steps to nirvana. And I'll read out the step that you may feel that, oh, it's very difficult. But then I'll explain to you some secret. How you can achieve to the Nirvana, understanding and using same truth. It says like this, quote, from sincerity comes truthfulness. From truthfulness comes feeling. From feeling comes harmlessness, from harmlessness comes unselfishness, from unselfishness comes detachment, from detachment comes objectiveness, from objectiveness comes clarity, from clarity comes concentration, from concentration comes observation, from observation comes self-realization. From self-realization comes awareness. From awareness comes alertness. From alertness comes enlightenment. And from enlightenment comes bliss. This is by Sri Akbar Ali Jetha and it's copyrighted article. Sorry, a second. When he was writing this 14 steps to Nirvana or happiness for his book Reflection, he was reading these steps to me and asking how effective they are. And I said that Akbar Bhai, even I do not know true meaning of some of the words you are using. How will I reach last step of Nirvana or happiness? And he said, please don't worry. The best part of this sutras is that if you follow true path of ahisa and veganism by mind, body, and spirit, you will reach to this last step of nirvana automatically. You just follow first step by your sincere and conscious mind and spirit, and you will reach next step automatically. It will work like domino effect, and ultimately you will reach to nirvana and happiness. And I can confirm that, feel that he achieved his enlightenment and bliss 
and nirvana and happiness during his lifetime. During this fantastic four days event, so far we have listened to true masters like Dr. Will Turtle, Srimati Pravda Ji Tatrabhanu, Sri Mohanji, Sri Pradeep Bhai, Sri Nitya Shanti, and Sri Pranik Bhai Shah. And they share with you importance of various schools of meditation, which is very important to silence your mind and know and communicate with your soul. But many find it very difficult in initial phase of this path of Ahinsa and Veganism. So we have experienced that few small acts like daily discipline and behaviors may be useful to change our present karma for connecting with our soul. It's a question of how to reach to the connect, correct wavelength of communication with our soul. In our experience, unless you are lucky because of your past and current karma, it cannot be changed by single stroke of any act. So one needs to start small acts of ahimsa, love, compassion in daily lives for reaching the wavelength of the soul, which is happiness. Consider second thing I have seen is that the present life, which is Kali Yuga, and again, Shivani ji say it's a Ghor Kali Yuga, not ordinary Kali Yuga. In our understanding, it is very difficult to do all this spiritual and deep understanding. So how do we achieve it? You can't drop all, change everything, what you are doing, like your business or your profession, etc. Sometimes it is done in a very negative way. So what I have observed is that you start following certain simple principles in life, starting from today. So be truthful about everything, not even white lies. White lies, I like uh, that if you are going for a meeting and if you are running late and then tell the people who you are going to meet, oh, I am late because there was terrible traffic. In fact, you started late from your home and you knew that you are going to be late. Still, you just say traffic was horrible. So that's a white lie. Don't do it. Tell the truth, prepare early, start early. Second thing is be honest about everything, not even the smallest thing you do, and don't become dishonest. Third thing is when you do business or transaction, think about other party, such as what is there for him. Just don't think about what is there for you only. So don't become selfish to the extent that it is acceptable to become dishonest. You are allowed to become self-centered but not selfish and hurt other people because anything you do, have, you have to pay the price. If you don't pay the price, your children will pay the price. So there are situations in life when some situation arises which brings trouble, pain, and suffering in life, and we have tendency to blame somebody. Also, that is, this is because of this person or that person, or, or my destiny or my bad luck. All such things have happened to me. Please don't do it and accept it as it comes, as if you have invited the situation. And then start trying to solve the issue. So accept Acceptance is very important in life. Don't blame anybody. Another thing I observe that I'm and which I'm practicing is that even if you have enemies or people who are against you or not interested in your progress but their own progress, please don't think bad about them. Just think good about everybody. And slowly, slowly, you will see the thing will change. And one of the most important thing is that we have to do is change our karma by thought, word, and deed. 
and do it correctly, harmlessly, egolessly, truthfully, and by thought, word, and deed. Now, very important that you say and what you do is very important. But thought is extremely important. Because what you say is a one-time thing. What you do is a one-time thing. But before you, what you say and do, you think 100 times what you are going to say, how you are going to say. And everything you think creates a karma. If it is bad karma, it creates a bad, uh, bad thought, it will create a bad karma. And if it is a good thought, it will create a good karma. So be careful about what you are thinking. So these are the small, simple things which is helping me and Naina, which may help you as well. Try to practice every day in your life. I think you can achieve whatever you want in this life within, of course, reason. And last thing is that, again, thinking, speaking, and doing all these things is good, but you have to work for it. And it's not going to happen automatically. As everything happens for reason, so think big, think positive, always and try to do simple things, and wish this may help you and your life to improve your life. And I'm sure you will have hundreds of questions out of this, and that is good. Thank you, and blissful life. God bless you all. Thank you. Goodbye.